Good morning. Welcome to our time of worship and happy New Year's Eve day. Take notice to the to the bulletin and the uh, schedule of events here at the church over the next couple of weeks. And also, are there any other announcements that someone has? Keep those on our prayer list in prayer, as well as our military and families. And let us begin by joining in song, our first hymn of the day. Gather in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We stand amazed how you have come to us. We marvel at your plan of love. When all things were silent, and there were no prophets in the land, And so we rejoice and give you praise, and we constantly pray. Proclaim the good news of great joy. The peace and love of Jesus Christ is with you now and forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Take a few minutes to greet one another with the peace of Christ.
be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. from Isaiah chapter 61 verses 10 to chapter 62 verse 3 I will great re greatly rejoice in the Lord my whole being shall exalt in my God for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation he has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels for as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden cause what it is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. We will now read responsibly Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. The second reading comes from Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also has an heir through God. The Word of God for the people of God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord 
and they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. The Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what is customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, you are now dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all your peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, for the glory of the people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your soul, your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there in fasting and prayer night and day, at that moment, she began to praise God and to speak about the child to all, the, all who were looking for redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Are there children that would come forward for the children's message? <laughs> Good morning. Again, we spoke earlier, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so it is. It's New Year's. The New Year. Almost. Last week at this time, we were in Christmas Eve, and sure enough, Christmas came. And we celebrated Jesus' birth on Christmas Eve and then on Christmas. And now in our scripture today, we're reading about something that occurred a little bit later in Jesus' life. His parents took him to the temple to dedicate him to the Lord. And so while they were there, they were there for the pass, or they were there then later for the Passover. And while they were there, and Jesus at that time was 12 years old, and when they were on their way back, they noticed that Jesus wasn't with him them, and so they ran back. I would think they would run. They would go quickly to find Jesus. And where do you think they found him? You are right, in the temple courts. And he was there among the other people. He was listening. He was asking questions. He was speaking as well. And he was teaching already at the age of 12. So we are never too young to talk about Jesus and talk about God's word. Jesus came so that he could do his father's will. He said to his parents, I must be about my father's business, meaning God. He was there in the temple to help people to know how to live. And the scriptures tell us how to live. They teach us how to live. And here in church, we learn those things as well. And typically in Sunday school, you do that as too well. And, and then we learn about serving God. And one of the things that's so cool about what you do here is you serve God 
by helping other people by taking the jingle offering, which helps people. Would you do that? And maybe a couple others could assist with the jingle offering? Thank you. so much. Let's say a prayer. Lord God, we thank you for today and for this offering, the offerings that we bring to you and the offerings that will be used this month to assist individuals. Lord God, be attentive to their needs and we thank you, Lord God, for who you are and all that you have provided in Jesus' name. Amen. First week of Christmas. <laughs> yes, and tomorrow we know is the beginning of the new year, <laughs> 2024. Perhaps 2023 has been good and kind to you. Perhaps it was a bit of a struggle at times, but we thank the Lord for his presence with us to give us strength, to give us hope and joy for who he is for who he is. So let's take a look at the gospel lesson today. In, two, in today's gospel, we, list, we learn about two individuals. They had been waiting, Simeon and Anna. In their own ways, they had been waiting, waiting in the temple. And then the realization that their time of waiting had been fulfilled. Over the past weeks, we've been talking a good bit about waiting. 
We talked about how Israel was waiting for their Messiah, for the Messiah to come. And then, too, we, we waited during Advent as we approached the time of Christmas. We waited during Advent for the celebration of the birth of Jesus. And children, too, waited expectantly for children for Christmas morning and the anticipated gifts that they would have, that they would receive. So we waited. We waited. And sure enough, the day of Christmas came. And the day of Jesus' birth signaled the fulfillment of many prophecies, many prophecies that the Messiah would come. The time of waiting was accomplished. As I read about Simeon and Anna as they waited, I considered other times of waiting. And you might take a look at your own lives and remember times of specific waiting when you were waiting for something special to happen. For those of us who have children, we know something about waiting while that baby was developing within our womb as women and uh, anxiously looking forward to the day, the day day that the baby would be born. I also remember when I was in college, remember the college catalogs, those of you who have done that. I remember studying that catalog and checking off the courses that I had taken, the courses that I was taking at the time, and looking at the ones I would still need to have, wondering and waiting for that day when those studies would reach completion. And then as I was considering waiting, I remembered a time that our son, Paul and I, our son, Jeremy, waited. (laughs) He often seemed frustrated as he waited to get his pilot's license. Early on, he flew with my husband, who also had a pilot's license, and a small plane, Jeremy dreamed about the day when he would pilot and he would have his own pilot's license. And then he flew with an instructor at a local airport. It seemed it took forever to him to get the prescribed number of hours that he needed. And once that was accomplished, His test, his pilot's test, was postponed six times because of weather. But then, sure enough, the day came when he received his pilot's license. He took the test and he passed it. And then, shortly after that, he went on for further training. And that was with the ATP airline transport professional. He gained more skills and more ratings Eventually, Jeremy became a flight instructor and then had his own flight school for a time and now flies as a patrol pilot for a pipeline that extends from Canada to Texas. I don't think that he often thinks anymore about how long he waited, how anxiously he waited, how he was so frustrated in his time of waiting for his pilot's license. And so as you think back on times of waiting, you might be able to think of some times too. And there's all sorts of things during life that we wait. Perhaps we're waiting to hear a report from a doctor and hoping it's a good report. Perhaps we're waiting for a wedding day. I know someone who is being married today. She's been waiting for this day, and it's a beautiful day for her wedding. Waiting, we wait. I share these times that seem to be of tremendous times of waiting for me, for my son, perhaps for you. You can think of some times. Perhaps right now you are waiting. Take heart and wait and seek that which you are hoping to have happen. Oftentimes, as we are waiting, we are also busy because life is like that. As we wait for a certain thing, thing, we are also waiting. As we look at our gospel lesson today, we see Simeon and Anna. They had been waiting. We see Simeon, described as a man in Jerusalem who was righteous and devout. He was waiting 
the scriptures say, for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. He was waiting. As Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to be dedicated to the Lord, and they came into the temple courts, we read in the scriptures that Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. God's saving grace has come through the Messiah. For my eyes have seen your, mis- your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. A light, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. We've spoken about how light came into the world as Jesus was born. This was no small declaration for Simeon to say these words. He is saying, I can go now, Lord. I can go in peace because I have witnessed God's salvation in the sight of all nations, Gentiles, as well as the Jewish people. The Messiah had arrived. And Joseph and his mother marveled at the things that were spoken to them. Then Simeon blessed them. He blessed them too. And isn't it curious how how Simeon, with the Holy Spirit upon him, did say, Your child, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel. And yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, he said to Mary. Yes, Mary, even as she had witnessed the birth of her beautiful child, he then grew into a man and eventually led off to be sacrificed and crucified, a sword pierced her soul when that happened. But Simeon's wait was over, and he beheld the Messiah. Then enters the prophetess Anna. She too has been waiting. Did you catch that Anna is a prophetess? Well, not as many women are found in the scripture as men as prophets, There were those who were prophetesses. Anna's prophetic office places her in the category with such Old Testament worthies as Miriam, the sister of Moses, Deborah, the judge, and Huldah, the prophetess. The Talmud identifies seven Old Testament women as those who were holding the office of prophetess. The scripture shares that Anna, a widow, was very old. 84 years old at that time surely was very old in biblical times. In the ancient world, being old was often associated with wisdom and piety. So for those of us who are getting older, we can consider ourselves wise, right? And pious in God's eyes. Anna would have also known about the many prophecies declaring the coming of the Messiah. She too, along with Israel, was waiting for the Messiah to come. While she was waiting in the temple courts, in the temple, she worshiped God. She dedicated herself to worship, fasting, and prayer. And when she saw Mary and Joseph with Jesus in the temple, the scripture shares, coming up to them at that moment, in an instant, some scriptures say, in an instant, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. After all her years of waiting in the temple, many years waiting In an instant, Anna knew that Israel's Redeemer had come. Waiting. What are we doing as we wait? 
as shared last week, we were waiting for Christmas. Today, we are waiting for the new year to arrive. Always something on the horizon. But then, too, we need to take stock and remember, too, that we are to love the Lord our God each moment, even as we wait. Like Anna, she worshipped. She fasted. She prayed within the temple. We, too, as we wait on fulfillment of our life's goals, those things that we are waiting for as we seek, and prepare for their their fulfillment, we are called to serve our Lord, to worship him, to pray, and yes, to fast as we seek him. We can learn much from Simeon and Anna. But today's scriptures do not end with the declaration of Jesus as Messiah. As I shared with the children, And we are all children. There was another part to this. After they had gone back to Nazareth, their own town, and they watched the child as he grew and became strong, he was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. There were those times that they came to the temple. And they went to Jerusalem. We read this starting with verse 44. One, which I did not read, but I'll read now. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went to the festival, according to their custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers at 12 years old. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Isn't that something we might say if we were looking for one of our children and we couldn't find them and we were worried and concerned? And why have you done this? Why have you treated us like this? (laughs) Mary said. Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. And Jesus responds, why were you searching for me? Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? Some translations say I needed to be about my father's business. Father, God. (laughs) But they did not understand what he was saying to them. I'm sure being the parents of Jesus was a baffling experience at times for his parents. Jesus was growing. He was growing into a man. But Jesus already had a mission, a mission to fulfill. In today's text, we see him already embarking on that mission. Growing in wisdom. Growing in wisdom. And already at the age of 12, sitting in the temple courts, learning, and also teaching. And all who heard him were amazed as he was about his father, his father God's business. And I'm sure, as we read in other places, Mary pondered these things in her heart. May we, too, ponder these things as we consider all that has occurred through these weeks of preparation for the celebration of Jesus' birth, and now as we move forward, learning from the scriptures more about Jesus and his teachings as he definitely grew in wisdom and as he teaches us today and leads us forward in our journey of growing in Christ's likeness, learning from him. For those who were waiting for the birth of Jesus, 
He has come. Our time of waiting for the celebration of the birth of Jesus has already come. In other times of waiting, may we all patiently wait for our expectations to be fulfilled. And in our times of waiting, may we journey forward with our Lord. Onward. Would you stand and let's share together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us bring now to the Lord our tithes and offerings.
Let us pray. Lord God, along with Simeon and Anna, our waiting is over. We have celebrated the birth of Jesus, and we continue to celebrate and give thanks and honor to him for his coming into the world for us. Many in Jesus' day also celebrated his birth. Others did not. And so it is in our world today there are many who do not recognize Jesus as your son. We pray that they would come to know him, to know of his great love and hope, of your great love in sending him. Still there are many ways we continue to wait Life often places us in the condition of waiting. For each of us who are waiting for fruition of something desired or needed, be with us in our waiting. May we learn from Anna during our waiting. May we worship, pray, even fast, drawing close to you during our time of waiting. Lord, there are others who are waiting, waiting for food and water to satisfy their hunger, waiting for renewed strength to go forward, waiting for comfort in the midst of loss and deep sadness. Many wait. Be attentive to each one's needs. Move in their midst, and we thank you for your presence. In the midst of our waiting, grant us the desire to serve you in ways that are pleasing to you. As we enter into the new year, let us look forward to the enjoyment of your presence in our lives and share your hope, your joy, your peace with those we meet. We thank you for Christ's example in teaching us how to live. And as he taught his disciples to pray, we now pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord.